In the previous video in this series, I added local space and time frames for each cylinder, and then used those reference frames to add mesh refinement controls to each cylinder subvolume. In this video, I'll continue setting up this multi-cylinder engine simulation. Specifically, in this part, I will show you how to set up the appropriate models and boundary conditions. I will start the model description by adding a chemistry set that outlines the kinetics of the combustion mechanism. In this chemistry set, the gasoline component of the gasoline-air mixture is approximated using iso-octane. In this case, the engine is spark ignited. The spark event is modeled by the discrete particle ignition kernel model. The flame propagation is modeled using the G equation. Four separate spark events, one for each cylinder, must be defined. The first spark occurs in the Cylinder 1 reference frame at the following location. Within the cylinder's local time frame, the spark event occurs at a crank angle of 700 degrees. An energy release rate of 30 joules per second is used. To create the other spark events, all I need to do is copy this spark and then change the location and time reference frames to reflect those of the next cylinder. At this point, I have set up four different spark events with successive spark events phased by 180 degrees. Recall that this will produce a firing order of 1, 3, 4, 2. Now I can set up the boundary conditions. In a multi-cylinder case, the boundary conditions can be split into two categories, cylinder-specific and cylinder-non-specific. Cylinder-specific boundary conditions include boundaries that pertain to a single cylinder. These include the head, liner, and moving surfaces such as the piston and valves. For these boundary conditions, it's best to set up each boundary condition for the reference cylinder and then duplicate the boundaries for the remaining cylinders. I will start by defining the head boundary. Although the cylinder heads are cylinder specific, their definition as a wall boundary does not require the use of different location or time frames. As a result, I will lump these boundaries into a single boundary condition. I have also combined the cylinder liner boundaries into a single boundary condition. Now I must specify boundary conditions that describe the moving walls. Since the description of these boundary conditions requires the use of local location and time frames for each cylinder, I need to add a different boundary condition for each cylinder specific component. I will start by defining the moving piston wall for cylinder 1. The piston is a constant temperature moving wall. Its motion is described using the slider crank method, which is defined using the cylinder 1 time frame and the following engine dimensions. The piston moves in the Y direction from the Cylinder 1 reference frame. I added the remaining piston boundaries by simply copying the reference boundary and changing the reference frame to reflect that of the next cylinder. Now to define the motion of the valves. I will only show the definition of a single valve boundary since the definition of other valve boundaries uses a nearly identical workflow. The boundary for intake valve 1 within cylinder 1 includes the valve seat and valve stems. This is a constant temperature wall boundary which uses the cylinder's time frame. The motion of the valve is defined using the offset table method which uses the cylinder's time frame and the following lift profile to describe the valve's position throughout the engine cycle. The direction of motion for this valve is defined within the cylinder's reference frame using the following vector. Finally, I set the movement type to valve and select the valve seat and the surface that the seat contacts, which is the manifold in this case. To define the same boundary for the other cylinders, I simply copied this boundary, changed the surface locations, time frames, reference frames, and the seat and surface contact locations. I will skip the setup of the cylinder non-specific boundaries since these use the same settings as the single cylinder case. This concludes part 2 of this demonstration showing you how to set up a multi-cylinder engine simulation. 
In part 3, I will show you how to set up the initial conditions and simulation controls.